Hi everybody, this is Kefren, your favorite French Canadian. Today I'm going to show you how to boost your FPS in Call of Duty Black Ops 7. We're going to start by optimizing Windows and after that we're going to take a look on your Radian and Nvidia parameter and at the end we will go inside of the game. So now for Windows, we're going to start by writing settings and we're going to go to the settings of Windows 11. We're gonna start by gaming over there. So the first one is game bar. This one I really recommend to deactivate it. It's causing issue and also you're losing some FPS with it. Except if you have a Ryzen uh, CPU, the 7900X 3D or the 7950X 3D, they're using uh, the game bar uh, to prioritize your CCD when you're playing video games. So super important to use that if you have those processor. If you have any other processor, just deactivate it. After that, we're going to go to graphic. We're going to change default graphic setting over there. Make sure that your hardware accelerated GPU scheduling is at on. Super important to do that. We're going to go to gaming again. Capture, capture. Make sure that everything is deactivated like this. So uh, you want to save all your resources. And the last one is game mode. Now game mode, honestly, is really, really good. Back then uh, with Windows 10, it was a bit sketchy and a lot of like stuttering issue. But now you really need to using it uh, to make sure that all your resources are pri prioritizing your video games. Another thing that I recommend, we're going to go to system is your power. Uh, back then, uh, we were recommending to use the best performance, but now, honestly, just use balance. You will have better boost clock, longer boost clock. Uh, I did a couple of benchmark balance versus per best performance, and honestly, I'm getting better result with balance. So super important to do that. Another thing I want to mention is some recommendations. So make sure that your uh, XMP profile is activated if you have it on your BIOS, super important. Make sure that you download the latest uh, chipset driver for your CPU if you have an AMD or Intel. Also make sure that you update your BIOS to make sure that you have all the latest update from your uh, CPU or your uh, uh, motherboard provider. Make sure that you have your Windows update up to date. And the last one is also make sure that you have the latest driver from your GPU. So if you have an NVIDIA card, Radeon or Intel, super important. They always push new update and they optimize a lot of stuff in it. So now for NVIDIA. So first of all, in the graphics section, you don't really have the option for Black Ops 7 right now to do a DLSS override. I'm going to show you it uh, how to do that with DLSS Swapper. But anyway, I'm, I'm going to give you the best global setting to normally use. So first of all, in DLSS override, always make sure that you're using the latest. So the latest version of frame generation, the latest from Ray Reconstruction, and then the latest from Super Resolution. After that, make sure that you don't use smooth motion in Call of Duty, too much input lag. Low latency mode at on. I like to lock my FPS at 237 because I'm using G-Sync. And one thing that it can be important is your shader cache size. By default, I think it's 5 gig. So I recommend to use 10 or 100 if you have the place on your disk drive. Um, if you install a lot of different game, you will always need to recompile your shader cache if you don't have the, the space anymore. It can cause stuttering, it can cause corruption on your shader cache size. So definitely look at this. After that, in the settings section, um, if you want uh, your G-Sync, make sure this one is at on and apply it on different. If you're playing borderless, go full screen and window. So make sure this one is applied to the monitor who is compatible with G-Sync. Resolution, make sure that you're playing native and also make sure that you're using the IS refresh rate from your monitor is super important. I know a lot of people is playing at 60 Hertz and they have a high refresh rate and they don't even know. And the last one is the color option. I like to go at 55% uh, in the digital vibrance. Gives you a little bit more saturation. It's easier to see enemies. In the performance tabs, if you have the room on your GPU, I recommend to put the power maximum at max. You can expect 5 to 7% boost in your FPS. You're going to get longer boost clock, but you need some room on your card. So good thermals and stuff like that. Uh, because uh, NVIDIA is using an algorithm. So if you have pretty much uh, bad thermals, you're already at, uh, I don't know, 85, 87 degrees. You're not getting anything from that. So it's more like you're playing, your video card is at 62 and you have the room for it. Just go with it.
So now, DLSS Swapper. So I have a dedicated guide that we're going to show you how to do that, but I'm just going to show you uh, quickly. So your Call of Duty over there, uh, by default, will be at version 3.7. So it's DLSS 3. So uh, we're going to do uh, an example over here. If I click here and I just go original, as you can see, this is the uh, basic version. So what you want to do is you use the latest version from NVIDIA, the 310.3. And you swap it and now you're going to use the dlss4 for call of duty and make sure that your dlss preset is at always use latest so when you did that and also you can do frame generation if you want to use it so you're going to make sure that you're using the latest version of dlss and uh, it will be a lot better for your image quality i'm pretty sure it will be an nvidia app when you're going to release driver for it but right now you need to do it with dlss swapper so now let's go to the radiant settings so now for Radiant card, we're going to go to settings, display first. Make sure that you're using your free sync. If you have a monitor compatible with it, you're going to make sure that you're going to synchronize your GPU with your monitor. So really important to use that. After that, we're going to go to gaming in the graphics section. Make sure that you're using the custom profile. So don't use those presets over there. Make sure that you're selecting your GPU. In my case, it's a 9070 XT. Don't use your integrate GPU. It can be tricky if you're playing on a laptop or even a desktop like me that has an integrate GPU. After that, the first one that you will need to look at is your uh, FSR 4 that you can force in some game that it's uh, using FSR 3. This one, uh, it's not necessarily everybody will have it. It really depends if your card is compatible with it. So definitely enable it if you have it. Also, I want to mention if you're playing in a game that uh, doesn't have FSR, doesn't have frame generation and you're struggling with your FPS, fluent motion frame can be a nice uh, option over there. You activate it, you're going to get like 30 to 30% boost. It will add input lag, so don't use that if you're playing a competitive game. But this one can help with an uh, older game. Uh, don't use anti-lag one. This one is not good. Don't use a radiant boost. Radiant chill, I really recommend to use it. And I will explain you why. So for an example, in my case right now, I have a 170 Hertz monitor. And to stay in your free sync range, you need to be, uh, you need to produce less than 170 FPS. So my recommendation is take your amount of Hertz on your uh, monitor. In my case, it's 170. Do minus three and lock your FPS at 167. You can do the same thing if you have a 240 Hertz monitor. Go with 30, uh, 237. Uh, so you're always going to make sure that you stay in your free sync range. It's better for uh, the fluidity of your image. And also, really important, if you want less input lag, you need to make sure that your GPU is not at 100% utilization. So uh, 98, 97, something like that. So sometimes it's good to just lock your FPS. Again, it depends on the game. Maybe in some game, 160 F 67 FPS will be... 100% uh, utilization for me, so you can go maybe a little bit lower. You can also do it per game. Right now in the graphics section, I'm doing it for all my games on my computer, but sometimes, I don't know, you're playing the new Assassin's Creed, just go to Assassin's Creed, and you can lock your FPS over there if you want. So really important to do that for your uh, utilization, but also to make sure that you're staying in your free sync range. Another thing that I want to mention, image sharpening too can be nice if you don't add FSR in-game or a sharpness slider. Uh, so if you're playing an old game or a game that just have like TAA and the game is very blurry, activate this and move your slider between something 60 to 70% depending on your preference. And it will really help to have a better image quality. Last thing that I want to mention, if you have some random stuttering and you don't know why, this option at the end can be really nice. It resets your shader cache, so you just perform a reset. And after that, when you will reopen your game, it will just rebuild your shader. Sometimes it can take time, so don't go too crazy if your game is lagging, but uh, it can help. I, I saw a lot of person uh, having this issue with Call of Duty, so this one can really help you. So this is pretty much it, guys. Make sure that you have the latest uh, version of your driver, and I also have a dedicated drive on uh, how to overclock your GPU. For me, it gives me 12% boost in my FPS without too much effort, so you can definitely look at my guide. So now let's go in the game. So now inside of the game, so display mode, I like to play full screen exclusive. Make sure that you're using your dedicated GPU over here, really important. Make sure that you're using the IS refresh rate from your monitor and also make sure that you're using your native resolution. 
Make sure that you're using NVIDIA Reflex Low Latency if it's available to you. So this one should be at on. And uh, for the rest of it, I don't use any VSync in my gameplay and menu. It adds input lag. Hey, I just play unlimit my FPS because anyway, I'm locking it with my NVIDIA software. After that, uh, everything can stay the same. I don't recommend to use automatic for your HDR over there. Make sure that you're using off. Now let's go to quality. So the first one is upscaling and sharpening. Honestly, if you have an RTX card and you're pushing the DLSS4, it's kind of clean. So I recommend to go DLSS quality. After that, sharpness is question of preference. I like to play at 60. And really important to use the transformer model. This one will be a lot better for ghosting and stuff like that. So I really recommend to use that. You can expect 10% boost. If you don't like DLSS or it's not available to you, I recommend to use the Fidelity FX over here. And me, I'm playing at 80. Again, question of preference is if you need a little bit more strength, go higher. If not, go less. I'm not a fan of FSR3. It's too blurry. Uh, same thing with XESS. DLAC, DLAA is kind of good, but you're going to lose 10% in, in your FPS. So it's not worth it for a game like this in multiplayer. And uh, if you have FSR4 uh, available, definitely test it out. Normally, FSR4 is almost on par with DLSS4, but uh, it's not uh, compatible with my video card right now. So that's pretty much it uh, after that i don't recommend to use frame generation uh, dlss or the one from amd it add too much input lag you can put a little bit higher your skill target at 80 or even 85 uh, if you're struggling with your vram after that texture and uh, detail and texture this one i just go max it really depend on the usage of your vram over here if you have the space just go max if not just lower your stuff Depth of feel, really important to go with off. And after that, I'm going to show you a lot of different parameters. The goal here is not to have like decent, uh, like beautiful uh, graphic quality. It's more like you want visibility, FPS, and that's pretty much it. So particle resolution, go with very low. You're going to have a nice 4% boost over there. B bullet impact, I recommend to go with on because you want to see where you're shooting. Persistent effect, go with off. Shader quality at medium, you can expect 3% boost in your FPS. After that, this probably this section will be huge. This is where you're going to get the most of your FPS. So shadow quality, very low. Everything else at off. And static reflection at low. You can expect 25% boost over there. It's huge. The game will look a little bit flat without th those stuff. But still, it will be uh, visibility will be great. And also your FPS. The last one is environment. I, I recommend to go with very low for your turn quality. Volumetric quality at low here, a nice 5% boost. Go with off for the rest of it, another 5% boost over there for your FPS. In the view section, I recommend to put your motion uh, reduction preset at off. Make sure that you're not using world motion blur and weapon motion blur, so both at off. And also your FOV, I like to play at 104. Really important to understand if you add more FOV, you're going to lose FPS. So if you're struggling to run the game, don't go too crazy with your FOV. Maybe plat 90, 95, something like that. And do some testing with this one. So this is pretty much it, guys, for my uh, Black Ops 7 guide. If you have any questions, just comment in the YouTube section. Post me your rig, CPU, GPU, and RAM. I will try to help you the best that I can. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Peace.